I think I, and even with what we're doing, but to look at the person that's still, and maybe, you know, never might ever get into this, um, even what I might consider a higher form of consciousness when it comes to Christianity or something, but like be able to speak with them with respect, even from the, that they are still in this, still in a scriptural devotional, which I don't even know if I am or not, you know, that's fine. But like, um, have to be able to respect that and, and even say, Hey, you know, I was raised this way. And, and even though there was, I mean, you and I, I, I can, you know, go into bed in tears, having conversations about the end of the world. Like mm. I, I have problems with that. And, you know, I had, you know, and I have conversations with people now that about that. Let's Hey, let's not talk about that around the kids. I can, I'll have that conversation with you, you know, or something like that. Um, and I can meet you there. But, um, so being able to, to dialogue with in people in that space. But I, I also think that people that are coming into this space through this medium, which is Jordan Hall and, and, and the, the Peterson pipeline, like downstream mm -hmm. from that, from new atheism, I think that they are, they do have a language that is transcendent from, and, and won't just, I mean, some people will, but like fall into like, I'm just going to pick up the, the Christianese jargon. I don't know. I don't see that as, as the case very much in yeah, this, in this world. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree with a lot of that. I, 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 I guess, yeah, maybe the last thing I'll say on that front is, is, um, Hmm. There's a particular mode of Christianity that I see as, as possible, let's say that, um, interprets the Christian tradition as a story of um, coming to communion with God in such a way that uh, expands to include the entire universe in such a way that all of the grandeur that we know from history and from science, uh, everything we know about chemistry and biology uh, is part of a sort of cosmic unfolding that is leading to that communion with some grand good you know, holistic, beautiful, kind, compassionate, human, more than human thing. Um, and I think that you can render all of the uh, traditional images and symbols in those terms. And I think you could go to church and you could relate to God as that. You could even relate to the, the, the God on the cross as being that continually evolving, transforming conception of, of the divine that God is always breaking out of and reforming and breaking out of and, and that human beings are always sort of successively learning about more and more and coming to express more and more on our way towards that grand communion. And, uh, and you can look at the entire history of evolution as being this meaningful, significant, incredible journey, um, et cetera, et cetera. I think all that's very possible in even framing that as, as Christian, as Christianity, that this is sort of a particular new kind of way of thinking about Christianity. And there have already been people in this vein, you know, Teilhard de Chardin and other people who, who've kind of thought in these terms. Um, and in my conception of that Christianity, uh, if someone says, did Jesus, you know, cast out demons from people to heal their diseases, like the most e immediate answer without a problem would be, well, no, no, that's not, that didn't happen or, th or that's not to be understood as like what that's ultimately about or, or what that, why that's even significant. Um, and that not causing any, any uncomfort, right. Or causing any sense of like, ah, you know, like I'm not being true to the tradition or, or, oh, I guess I've watered down my faith so much that, you know, now I'm relating to this as just like a story or something that, there's a form of relating to these stories as just stories, but incredibly also meaningful for the way that they gesture to, to something grand and true. Um, that to me is a form of Christianity that I think is possible, but I don't see that much out in the world, at, at least, you know, in some of the contexts that you just named, because in those contexts where you just do push back a little bit about, well, did that actually happen? And it's like, well, yes, it did. And it's very important that we, and it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. That is totally fine. But that is not the only way that, um, and I don't think anyone, and to be clear, I, 
I don't think anyone's saying this is the only way that this can be approached. But do you see what I'm saying? I just, yeah, I want to. Yeah, I think so. So I'm trying to, because there was a comment, but I, I think we talked about, we engaged with uh, briefly about exclusivity, exclusive. And I think that's where, obviously, this is the yep. rub. You know, that's the rub. I mean, that there's, and that would be, I don't know if that just is all of a sudden, when you, when that is the rub that you are in the, uh, scriptural devotional versus something else or something like that. Uh, historical critical. Well, wait, can um, I ask you a question? Be- yeah. Sorry, just quick, quick question. I think there's a little bit of a delay. I, so yeah, actually, cause you were mentioning earlier that like you feel this profound sense of like brotherhood in this scene of like, well, yeah, you're a Christian and, and you're Eastern Orthodox and you, you know, but like, but you feel like there's this pluralism that to all that where people are sort of like, yeah, but we kind of get each other and it's sort of a thing. I guess my question is, does that extend beyond Christianity? It, does it extend to other people? Like if, if someone is, so say, yeah, a that's, that would be yeah. sure. Uh, that the, so to, to answer that is like, okay, well, I think that there are two ways of looking that, that I don't know if they will both fit into a type of orthodoxy. Um, from my perspective, my limited mm-hmm. perspective, one would be that there are certain forms of, uh, Christian universalism, you know, that, that there is an ultimate redemption, but that exclusively happens through Jesus Christ, like through the, um, through the incarnation and then also then through the death and resurrection. So I think, and I don't know if there's a place, I, I mean, and so there, there's that side, but then there's also, mm-hmm. well, is there a more orthodox, like a more orthodox side that's like, well, do we believe in an actual resurrection? Do we believe in an actual virgin birth? Do we believe that it's possible that story of Jesus and the pigs or something did happen, you know, and then that's a commonality. Um, I would just say that I think there's, there's just gonna be space for both. (laughs) There's just, there's where there's a more, we can't stop that anymore. Mm-hmm. The I, I and what I experience with having conversations. So say I am in this kind of Apostles Creed Christianity or something, you know. Even within the Orthodox in the West, there's this little do do do. Well, that's fine. But like, uh, even in that, there's like, well, we're not divided by walls anymore. And then even to have this conversation with you to say, okay, well, maybe in some, like I even to just say, I don't know, like, mm. I I don't feel like I have to have a lot of, and maybe that's not respectable, especially if you're coming at it from a historical critical perspective, like, you know, you need to like know what you believe. I, well, I think in the same way that the, the personal experience of, of the, the traumas that inform our faith now, like that's where that's, that's actually more important to me than hmm. than the source criticism um sure and and so but i could say yeah i know about that stuff um and i don't know about it as well as <laughs> brendan dempsey at all i would say maybe go talk to him and, and i think that you would be gentle with somebody in a way because you, you because of how intense it was for you so it's, you know it's like i don't know um i don't know if that's answering your question uh and I don't think I'm trying to skirt around it. So well, I also, I'll say briefly too, like I hope people don't get the impression that I'm suggesting um, anyone who would be a Christian needs to go read, you know, a bunch of source of criticism or something. I, 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 I don't, I don't, um, that's not my, that's not for me what matters. Um, I think it, it ultimately all boiled down to it's just a matter of um th- yeah like like having a sense of of uh of taking certain ways of knowing seriously and uh and and not being closed to them uh and also being open to the fact that i mean i think that the that the spiritual journey is is a kind of punctuated equilibrium of 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 worldview busting you know what i mean like i i think that um, at least that's been my experience. Yeah. And, uh, and I feel like, I mean, I'd be curious how you would 
relate to the idea having gone through your experience like it completely how would you say this? it i would say that the propositional dissolved mm. but, i mean i still think that i i stand on i i operate with propositions like i said i sure. believe in a literal jesus christ and a literal resurrection or real resurrection like yeah because and, but but i think i believe in it more because it happened in my life yeah and that what that represents yeah you yeah. know that that's actually and that that's a that's a that is a true framework in which that makes complete sense you know in the meaning crisis or whatever for me mm -hmm. and that um that but it, but it is informed by a whole life of christianity and you know i'm a small town guy from arkansas i haven't had a lot of great exposure to the uh, other the world religions multiculturalism on a certain level i traveled quite a bit and spent summers in california and florida and different places you know and traveled out outside the, the united states a couple of times but so but not lived in metropolitan super multicultural uh centers or whatnot but are religiously diverse you, you know so um I don't bring that as a as an experience and and so that could you know well you just haven't seen enough of the world baxter okay that's that might be true but this is still this is still like uh foundational for me yeah yeah and i also to that point too i i don't think i think it's a very unreasonable uh notion that someone needs to be intimately aware with some or all of the world, you know, religions in order to, you know, well, that's kind I, of a modern or modern and a postmodern idea, I think. Mm. And, and, and to that point, finding an antidote to the meaning crisis and being able to land, like what makes sense to land. And I'm not saying that it's relative, but it kind of is. Like, where am I? Mm. What is my mm. life? What is my community? Yeah. What is my history? Yeah. Like, and, and not only that, even the point about like being able to factually intake all the religions or all the cultures, like that is a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Like only the great adventurers were able to do that until yeah. the encyclopedia. And even at that point, you know, now it's yeah. a YouTube search, but it's like, um, are <laughs> we all, we are i wanted i think i wanted to mention this to you it seems like humanity is so far outpaced by our technology because sometimes when i think about the the religious practice like even like our most divine or high forms of liturgy which are really complex mm -hmm. they they are um they're kind of simple in a way in comparison when you compare it to insane architecture and or even though you, i mean you can look back at historical art i don't know if I'm, I'm saying this right like worship and doing a rites of passage for a young man and and doing a having communal experience you know small group community experiences and these things they're, they're kind of simple sure versus this giant thing of the world um and i know that that kind of touches on some relativity or uh whatever but this is how, this is where I can land, and this is where I can like cultivate deep meaning into my family. Yeah. I can cultivate wisdom. I can cultivate I ideas about what is true. And yeah, no, I think that that's great. I I think everything you just said is is wonderful, and I would totally agree with it. Um, and I think, and you know, briefly when I talked to Paul and Leitner about this a bit, he kind of came, you know, made a very similar point, and I think it's a really important one, right? Which is that we can't live on all of the islands, right? We could navigate to all the different islands and we could hypothetically, well, no, I mean, this is the point we can't, couldn't hypothetically do live all those lives. Like yeah. we, we see that some, that other people are living other lives. We see that other people are inhabiting other worldviews uh, and we can get a sense of that, but everyone has to have the spot from which they operate. And if you're going to operate deeply in a spot, which people should try to do, that's a good thing to do then you've got to go deep into whatever your spot is and basically say, I'm not these other things. I think that that, I think what's the key about it though, 
is that you're aware of that move, right? There's a profound difference between someone who says what you said and someone who says, well, I'm a Christian and that's just the way it is and it's right and all these other people are just simply wrong and I'm not even gonna, you know what I mean? Like even, you know what I mean? Like, cause even if there's a certain way to which you kind of come down ultimately in something very similar in the end, which is to say, well, I am a Christian and I do think that this is the ultimate truth and I do think this is the way, just having the awareness that we're kind of pushed into declaring in almost a somewhat relativistic way our you know flag in the ground where we stand makes us more tolerant, more open, more kind of like less domineering and less closed-minded, right? We're like we're like I could have been something else maybe if I'd been born somewhere else. But I was born here, so I'm going to own that. And so when you do meet someone who was born from somewhere else, you're not going to, you're not as inclined to like, you know, um, yeah, treat them so radically as an other and as a wrong and as a this and that. So I just think that all of that is like one way in which some of the profound truths of tradition can really meaningfully show up in a meta modern orientation towards Christianity in this case, right? 